Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about Azure Web Pub Sub and how to integrate Azure Web Pub Sub with your Angular application. Azure Web Pub Sub is a fully managed real time messaging service that uses WebSockets protocol to enable a two way communication between your web application, your IoT devices, or anything that supports WebSockets protocol. Now, if you go down a little, this is very similar to Azure SignalR service. The key difference here is that SignalR is built on top of many other fallback mechanisms if WebSockets does not work and it is mainly targeted towards web applications. But here, it doesn't have to be web applications, it can be even IoT devices that supports WebSockets. This is the key point here. It supports variety of client SDKs and programming languages. Microsoft also says that Azure Web Pub Sub is built on the same technologies as SignalR. The big difference here is that there's no client requirement or protocol requirement. And if you're using Azure SignalR already, continue to do so unless there's something limiting you from using it in more places like in IoT devices. Now, there are a few terms that you should be familiar with when you use Azure Web Pub Sub service. This is similar to Azure SignalR as well. For example, clients. This is a connection between two things, could be your server, could be your client. A connection can have a connection ID as well. And then we have hubs. This is a logical concept for a set of clients. This enables even different applications to share the same Azure Web Pub Sub service. And then we have an option to group connections. This is mainly used for things like chat rooms and then we have the concept of users a single user can have multiple connections with multiple connection ids and then we have the fundamental thing here and that is a message it could be a json object or a text message that you want to be transferred from your server to your client or from your client to the server now if you focus on the workflow we have your client this could be your angular application and we have azure web pub sub service and then you have your server your server could be a .NET application or a Java application or anything that supports REST APIs. Your client can be the Angular application, as I said, or it could be any other IoT device as well that supports WebSocket connections. Between the client and the service, there is a WebSocket connection established. Unlike in SignalR, in SignalR there are many other ways that clients connect with the service like long polling and server sent events. But here, it's only WebSocket connections. If you focus here, between the service and the server, the server sends events to Azure Web Pub Sub using a REST API and the service, also the service can send events to the server using cloud events HTTP implementation. Cloud events is a protocol agnostic way of sending events. Now that we know what Azure Web Pub Sub is, let's understand what we're going to do today. This is what we're going to implement today and we're going to implement a web application that will issue a client token to an Angular application and this Angular application will establish a WebSocket connection with Azure Web Pub Sub service after that and then I'm going to show you how you can use a another application let's say a console application here to push events to your Angular applications through Azure Web Pub Sub. So let's get started. The first thing that we should do is creating an Azure Web Pub Sub service. For that, I have already created a resource group. Let me go into create a resource and search for Pub Sub. As you can see, we have the option. I'm going to click create here. And then we can name the resource. Let me call it Web Pub Sub Demo. And then I'm going to select the region. I'm going to go with Southeast Asia. And then we have an option select the pricing tier. If we click here, we can see we have two options, free and standard. For dev work, this is going to be enough. For production workloads, you can go with standards and that supports up to 1000 connections per unit. I will explain what units are now. Now, if you go here, we have an option to change this unit count, but you can't do it if you're using the free version. If I change this to standard version, we have the option to change the unit count. Basically, you can change the number of units depending on the number of uses that you're planning to have for the application that you're developing. One unit means 1000 connections. Let's say if you have 5000 
users planning to connect to this you can go with five units all right now let's go into the next tab and that is networking here we have the option to enable private networking as well basically you can integrate this service to a virtual network so that this will be accessible with a private ip of that virtual network and also you can disable the public internet from accessing this service i'm going to review and create this service now i have made a mistake here i don't want this to be standard now uh, unit count 5 for this demo i'm going back and i'm changing this to free and unit count 1 and now if i go into networking section one other thing that you should know is that if you're using free version you can't enable private endpoint connectivity and i'm changing this to public endpoint and then i'm going to go ahead and create this service as you can see the deployment is complete if i go into the resource you can see we have the generic information and we have the fku as free and the unit count as one now we have a few tabs here if i go into keys we have the connection strings here the primary and the secondary connection strings for connecting to this as the backend of your application and then we have the client url generator usually the url for the clients should be generated on your backend but here for your demos and things like that you can generate your client url and that contains the the name of the hub that you're connecting to and also an access token that is getting expired after a specified number of minutes now if i go into scale we have the option to change the pricing tier and then if i go into settings we have the option to change settings based on the hub you can specify the name of the hub and then you can specify whether this is allowed anonymously to connect and then we have an option to configure events for your backends you can specify how you authenticate and the type of events that you want to receive for your backends let me know down below if you want to learn about this i can do another video on it now i'm going back and if i go here we have the option to enable managed identity to the service and now if i go into networking as you can see as i said earlier we have the option to enable private access to your virtual network but you should be using the standard pricing tier for doing this all right now we have our web pub sub service in place let's go to visual studio and create our dotnet application all right i'm in my visual studio i'm going to go with hp.net core web application for generating the client url you can do the same here as well but let me show you how to do that using a ASP.NET application. I'm going to change the project name to Web Pub Sub Backend. And then let me change this to .NET 6. Now let me create this. All right, now application is in place. If we go into controllers and we have the default controller, let me change its name to Pub Sub Controller. And then I'm going to remove all the code here. All right, the first thing that we should do is installing the NuGet package for interacting with Azure web pops up. Let me do that now. All right, now we have that in place. Going into the controller. Now let me add a method, and it is going to be an HTTP GET method. And here we have to specify the connection string and the name of the hub of the Azure Web Pub Sub service that we're connecting to. And after that, we're going to use Web Pub Sub service client of the NuGet package that I have installed. We are going to reference that. And then we are going to generate the client access URI. It is basically the same as the one that you see here. And for this, we have to pass in the lifetime as well. Let me do that now. As you can see, we can pass in a time span here. And finally, I'm going to return the URL that I've generated. And here we have an error, and that is because we haven't imported Azure Web Pubs Up library. Let me do that now. All right. Now we have to fill in these two variables here. For the hub name, let me call it first hub. And this is going to be a dynamic thing. You can dynamically define hub names. Going back and then I'm going to copy the primary connection string that is here and paste it here. All right, now our backend application is ready. This we have implemented and I'm going back and then I'm going to run this application. As you can see, when I run this, I am presented with a Swagger UI because I have used 
dotnet 6 template i'm going to invoke the endpoint as you can see i am getting the websocket url for connecting my angular application now let's generate the angular application for connecting to this endpoint for that i have created this folder front end let me generate the angular application now all right my angular application is ready now let me go into the application and to app folder and we have the default template html i'm going to remove that and i'm going to add welcome websockets to it and then i'm going to create a new service let me call it websocket connection i'm getting this error because i'm not in that directory let me cd into it all right now let me add the service all right now i have added the service to represent the websocket connection the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to add rxjs websocket object here and then i'm going to add a method to connect let me make it a public one now the key point here is that we don't have to use any web pop sub specific library here to connect to the service since this is a generic websocket service we can just use any library that can talk to a websocket connection and that is why i'm using this generic service here let me create an object a websocket connection and and here we need to pass in the client connection url for that let me define a variable here and i'm going to copy this and paste it here let me make this a string now i'm going into the dotnet application that i have developed and then i'm going to copy this link here and paste it here for your production applications you should not do this i have developed the dotnet application to show you that you can use a method like this for example get wss url and then you can invoke the endpoint to get this link for this demo i'm just going to hard code it like this by invoking the dotnet endpoint point you can ensure that only secure authenticated clients are connecting to your backend now we have websocket connection in place it's time for me to subscribe to it now let me add this code here i can show this in the console when i receive the message from the backend but to make this a little bit more interesting let's wrap this around a observable i'm going to return a observable from my connect method and then i'm going to create a new observable it is going to be in any type and here i can reference the subscriber like this and then what i can do is i can move this code here into this observable code block i'm going to remove this console log and then instead of that i'm going to invoke subscriber.next so that my subscriber gets the message all right now i have completed my observable let me return that all right now I'm going to save this and then I'm going into my app component, app component.ts and here I'm going to add a constructor to receive the service that we have wrote. I'm going to include websocket connection service like this and then I'm going to implement on init. All right. And here I can connect to the websocket endpoint and then I can subscribe to it. And I will get the message here. I'm going to log this into the console like this. All right. Now, if we go into the architecture of what we are going to implement today, we have implemented these three things. Now, let me add a console application so that this application can push messages to Azure Web Pub Sub Service. And then I will be able to see those messages in my Angular application. Now, I'm going back to Visual Studio and let me add a console app. I'm going to call it console app and this I'm going to go with .NET 5. The first thing that we should do is we should install the same package that we have installed here and that is Azure Messaging Web pops up. Going into NuGet packages and then I'm going to paste it here and then I'm going to install it. Now let me add a code sample here that will push messages every second 
to Azure Web Pub Service. Now I'm going into the controller that we have developed and I'm going to copy this object here along with the connection string and the hub name. Let me copy that and paste it here. All right. Let me include Azure messaging dot sub and now we can send messages here. In the loop here, I'm going to add service client dot send to all and then I'm going to add Azure core library as well. And then let me do something a little bit more interesting. Let me add a index here. All right. Now our device application is ready as well. Now let me go back to the Angular application that we have created and let me run that. All right. I'm opening the console and then I'm going into the console application here, setting that as the startup project. Now let's run this application and see what happens. As you can see, we are receiving the messages that we send from our console application to our Angular application. Now what happens if we refresh this? It continues to work. Alright, this is the end of the video and this is a getting started video with Azure Web Pub Subservice. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Also, if you want and another video on Azure Web Pub Sub, let me know that down below as well. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you learned something new today and thanks for watching.